Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to give you a few books that you might be able to um, start reading and they might help you out um, with depersonalization, dissociation, anxiety, stuff like that. Um, a lot of them are, are science-based and they can really help you out. So let's get started. Um, one book that pretty much everybody should read and I haven't read full the, all, fully all the way fully through um, but I know the concepts within it and they're really good uh, the, ha the seven habits of highly effective people is a really good book um, for really taking control of what you can in your own life and moving in a positive direction that is under your jurisdiction and, and helping you focus and really become a, an overall more effective person, which comes in the title. So that's a really good book to read. Um, another book is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. And this one's a little bit more, more out there. It is pulling from quantum mechanics and a whole bunch of different scientific resources and he has another book called the science of changing your brain but basically this book is all about getting down to the smallest particles that exist or the atoms and at the end at, at the core of everything is energy and so through that you are connected to everything and so it also while using that that connection realizing that you affect everything around you just by being whatever you are you can go in and change what you attract it's kind of like the law of attraction um, but it it goes into depth about some meditations for letting go of bad habits or uh, emotional addictions and I think that's the most important part of this book is it talks about um, trying to break the habit of being your old, unhealthy, dissociative, uh, repressing, suppressing self. And so, yeah, it's a really good book. Um, another book is called, you can't see the title right here, I took off the sleeve, but it's Emotional Intelligence. Uh, Emotional Intelligence by Dr. David Walton. And anybody who's going through depersonalization, dissociation, you, you need to work on your emotions and you, you need to improve your emotional intelligence. And so this is just a really good book to get you thinking about how emotions really are a part of your everyday life and how emotions come into play and how you can kind of become more aware of your emotions and use it to create a better life and a better uh, work environment for yourself. Um, another book is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and this Eckhart Tolle is an amazing um, teacher. He, he, I would say he's more related to kind of the Eastern philosophies um, but a lot of the concepts that he talks about are really solid and it kind of relates to being mindful and being fully present in the moment and accepting whatever's in the moment and I think that's really important it's really helped me out to let's say I feel something and it's uncomfortable instead of rejecting it or trying to avoid it just sit with it you just be with it and you acknowledge it and by doing that you can you can transcend whatever you're feeling, whatever the negativity, um, whatever is going on. Like you can, by accepting, you are transforming it into something positive for yourself. So this is a really good book. Um, there's tons of good stuff in here. It's not it's not very long. Um, yeah, really good book. Um, another book that Harris Harrington, Harris Harrington uh, talks about and mentions, mentions in his program is Attachment and Psychotherapy. And 
this is a really good book because it really goes into depth of your attachment style and how this affects you and how you can overcome it. Um, it talks about disorganized attachment and experiences that people have in therapy that can be related to for you in order to overcome what you're dealing with. Um, because depersonalization is dis it's dissociation. You are dissociating and dissociation stems from disorganized attachment. Like chronic dissociation stems from disorganized attachment. And so this book really gets into the scientific like cold hard facts and stuff that you need to know. So <coughs> it's a really good book. It'll really validate your experience and really comfort you in, in knowing that what you're experiencing is it's a physical change in your brain that's happened and it's been it's been put into place because of the foundation of your attachment style and your parents attachment styles all that ground groundwork has built you up to where you are right now and so the the cool thing is you can change and so this book really will validate where you are and the last book that I'm currently reading, which is freaking awesome, is Buddha's Brain. And it has a foreword by Daniel Siegel, who is a, uh, a well-known figure in the psychological and um, psychiatric um, realm. And it's really, it's connecting contemplative practices like Buddhism um, and basically it, it pulls from Buddhism but I see connection with a lot of other religions uh, within this book and basically it's it's taking what mindfulness and emotional regulation and spirituality and putting it in a book with a science to back it up saying that you know you may have an insecure attachment and these are ways that you can help that you may have insecurities these are tips to help go back and and fix problems from your past and it it talks about activating your parasympathetic nervous system which is so important it allows you to stay present and not become overwhelmed as much and it's just a really awesome book I, re I really recommend it I would say I recommend this book the top top two of the ones I just mentioned so there you have it there's those are some books that I have um, skimmed through read not fully read all of them but I've read a lot of them uh, good chunks of most of all of them um, and they're really they they will really help you out it is so important to educate yourself about how to become healed from this it is so important to realize that what you're going through there is studies about it there is research about it there is a way that is more comfortable outside of this and I think one of the most important things that you can do right now if you are in it and you know I'm still in it but not as deep as it has been and I'm super grateful for that but one of the most important things you can do is to just see yourself as the observer see yourself as some as the awareness that can allow emotions allow feelings allow discomfort and just notice just notice 
Notice feelings. Notice what it feels like to put your toes on the ground. Notice what it feels like to put your hands on your face. Notice what it feels like to feel angry. Notice what it feels like to be sitting in a room. Okay, that's like one of the most... I would say that's one of the most important things is to just be able to be present in this moment and allow this moment and not try to run away from it. Accept it for what it is. Be with what is. Just be with it. And that doesn't mean that you're giving up and you're not trying to get better and improve and integrate your brain, but t accepting the present moment will help you transcend your rough time. Accepting now, being in the now, at this moment, will help you in another now, in another moment, feel real. Feel like the surroundings are real. Okay, so hope this helped. Haven't made a video in like a week. Yeah, just Get reading, get reading, get practicing, get knowledge and apply it. Do the best you can. Keep breathing. Breathe. Four, four, four. Breathe in for four. Hold for four. Out for four. Just get your body relaxed. Get your body centered. You know, you don't have to do anything crazy. Even if you just, you're working and you don't want anybody to know that you're trying to relax. Just... Just breathe. Just breathe slowly and be aware of it. Be aware of everything that's that you feel. Don't suppress it. Just acknowledge it. Be aware. Okay? Hope this helps. Have a good day. Peace.